General Simonite, you know, you've been before this committee several times. We've been listening to the president and we've been listening to him during his, uh, not just the administration now, but when he was campaigning, talking about a very ambitious um, infrastructure program. And I'd like to ask you, have you had conversations either with the president or with members of the administration concerning uh, any, of, any of the details of what the plans are from his perspective? Uh, yes, sir. Um, I think, first of all, the, the most important thing of those discussions has been a theme that all of you have already said, and that is that many Americans think of infrastructure as roads, airfields, bridges. Uh, we need to continue to expand that dialogue to talk about um, coastal ports and inland waterways. And so there is, uh, we have had several questions from the administration to my staff asking specifically, uh, what are some things that are some significant challenges that you're faced with on budgetary issues? And where could there be some of those projects that would uh, be well served by additional infrastructure funding? I think the other thing, though, is the administration is very interested in potential for private public partnerships. And so we've asked, we've been asked a lot of questions about what would be some of the studies or cases of how you could see where a public private partnership ship could take some of that burden off of the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. I think the third area that we have asked questions is they said, are there some things when it comes to processes or procedures where we can unencumber you and allow you to continue to do your job in perhaps in a manner that might be a little bit more efficient and effective? So uh, working through the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Civil Works, we have provided answers to some of those questions. We don't know any outputs right now. We have mainly been in a provide mode, and we don't know exactly where that's going to end yeah, up. Yeah, I think it's important that um, the, the public knows that this, these conversations are taking place. I've had a few conversations also. I know that this committee is going to be a, a very busy committee. You might remember in one of your earlier appearances uh, in reference to the Tulsa District, we had that rather unpleasant experience with a senior employee statement uh, from, uh, from the Corps of Engineers that made the statement uh, quote, if it were up to me, there'd be no lake development, unquote. I want you to get in the record right now your uh, response to that statement. So, sir, I think I'll say the same thing I said last, uh, last month. Uh, the Corps of Engineers certainly sees a very active role for private-public partnerships and with respect to our uh, recreation facilities and some of those numbers that I gave you, we would continue to endorse those. Yeah. Uh, if there was a uh, member of my staff who felt that that is not appropriate, then that's on me and I'll fix that. Yeah. I, I, I do think it's important to clarify, though, that there are some very specific examples where the appropriate procedures by the private vendor were not followed. And as a result, based on our procedures, we had to request the, the right information. For instance, design, permitting, that kind of stuff. So there okay. could be some frustration <clears throat> with a very sp specific cases that come up on these. Yes, issues. that statement doesn't fit those circumstances, however. And uh, speaking of that, uh, Mr. Humphreys, we, uh, in your testimony, you talk about the difficulty in navigating the various permitting processes. Uh, with the Corps of Engineers. Are there any examples other than what you used in your opening statement that you'd like to share with us? Sure. I, you know, right now we're going through a process um, on private land that extends into the lake. And so it's not part of the Corps' property, but it is affected by a flowage easement. And so the Corps has the right to flood our private property. And we're trying to put a park, a waterfront park, into this area. And so doing some erosion control and a swim beach and then a performance lawn. And this is the front lawn of Carlton Landing. It's a place that we have been wanting to see built out from the beginning. Um, we ran into an issue uh, where you know, there is a um, 602 line is the, is the elevation where you can, you can develop down to that land and not have to worry about flood uh, risk. Below that, we didn't realize that there's also a 585 line, which is the top of the conservation pool. We've been working on this project for several months, and it had to go through the local office to get to the Tulsa office into the regulatory office before we understood that just a couple feet that we were wanting to do some impact and stabilization of the uh, erosion control of the bank below 585 
was going to bump us into a general permit, adding four to six months onto the process. And so that was something where had we, had we known the lay of the land from a regulation standpoint at the very beginning of the process, um, it could have been avoided. You know, I, I think that's good. There's not time to give the examples that are out there, but it's a, a, a bureaucratic problem. And I think everyone up here knows that, and everyone at the table down there knows that. So anything for the record that we can get from any of the witnesses would be very helpful for us to have while time is uh, uh, somewhat limited uh, during the course of these questions. Uh, Senator.